Finally, after centuries of colonial rule, a difficult partition, and several interstate conflicts, India has become one of the most significant and rapidly expanding economies in the world. For a huge part of its post-independence era, while the nation made significant strides in various sectors, many Indians were faced with issues like poverty, a lack of consistent electricity, proper roads, and access to clean drinking water. There was a clear difference between their urban and rural areas, with a vast majority of the rural population living without the basic amenities that their urban counterparts took for granted. Right now, the government of India has placed a high focus on mega projects that could positively affect the lives of the population. These projects aren't only infrastructure, they're the building blocks of India's plan to lift millions from poverty, provide employment, bridge urban-rural divides, and position India as a global infrastructural powerhouse. But what are these projects, and how are they changing the face of India? Let's take a look at some of the most insane mega-projects under construction in India. In the early 2000s, there was a clear need for a link between the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir are actually well known for their lack of proper infrastructure due to the region's notorious weather conditions. It was essential for the government to find a solution to the problem of transportation. In 2002, the Northern Railway took charge of the project and declared it a national undertaking. The total length is 1.315 kilometers and it rises 0.359 kilometers above the Chenab River, making it the world's highest rail bridge. The railway route runs through Bakal and Kauri in the Risi district of Jammu and Kashmir, J and K, India. In 2008, there were periods when the construction of the bridge was halted due to concerns about stability and safety. However, in 2008, the government saw to it that the construction resumed. The design and construction of the project were awarded to AFCON Infrastructure, a part of the eminent Shapurji Polanji Group, alongside IISC Bangalore. Furthermore, there was a collaboration with the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, that ensured that the bridge remained blast-proof. In August 2022, all of the work on the final joint of the bridge was completed, and it was inaugurated on August 13th, 2022. With this inauguration, Northern Jammu and Kashmir will experience previously unheard of rail connectivity that is unaffected by their extreme weather. This development will lead to economic opportunities. Tourism is set to get a significant boost, and seamless transportation between the regions is sure to boost their economies. By March 2023, the track laying was complete and a trial run had been conducted on it. The bridge is set to be operational by December 2023 or January-February 2024, and the world awaits its official inauguration for rail traffic. The next project has to do with India's longest sea, which is unofficially referred to as India's forthcoming Bridge of Dreams. It is bound to help India become a transportation hub soon. There are historical records from the 1960s that serve as the timeline for when the Indian government wanted to find a way to link the island city of Mumbai and its counterpart, Navi Mumbai. This birthed the construction of a bridge that will stand as India's longest sea bridge. The bridge is 21.8 kilometers long, including a 16.5 kilometer sea bridge and 5.5 kilometers of viaducts on land on either end of the bridge. It's located in the Mumbai metropolitan region and begins in Suri, South Mumbai, crosses Thane Creek before ending in Churle Uran Navi Mumbai. This project started as just a part of Greater Bombay's transportation vision and underwent several challenges. There were feasibility doubts and political turmoil, as well as environmental clearance issues. As a way to move forward, there were multiple bids and numerous negotiations. The project was shifted from a public-private partnership model, PPP, to an engineering procurement and construction, EPC, basis. In 2008, the project experienced some genuine traction. 
It's not only Indians who are working on this project. It has over $2.2 billion slotted out for its construction, and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, has become a significant stakeholder. They agreed to fund 80% of the total cost. A significant concern during this project was its environmental impact, particularly on mangroves and indigenous bird habitats. Due to this, after obtaining all the necessary clearances, the construction plans were duly modified to minimize the effect on the ecosystem. The government also compensated landowners and local communities that were displaced or affected to bring this construction to fruition. In 2012, the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority MMRDA, put forward toll rates for the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link MTHL, project. These included 175 rupees for cars, 265 rupees for light commercial vehicles, 525 rupees for buses and trucks, and 790 rupees for multi-axle vehicles. Subsequently, in 2016, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, the primary financial backer of the project, recommended higher toll charges. Due to escalating costs, it was anticipated that the toll rates implemented upon the project's completion would be even higher. Toll collection will utilize an open road tolling ORT, system and the MMRDA has confirmed that tolls will be in effect until the year 2045. Once this bridge is completed and opened at its expected date of January 2024, it is set to be the future of transportation in India. There is a forecasted daily usage of 70,000 vehicles. This will revolutionize the connectivity between Mumbai and Navi Mumbai. Communities like Panvel, Badlapur, Gansoli, Ambernath, and many more will greatly benefit from this construction, leading to a significant reduction in travel time. This is particularly great for those working in Lodha Commercial and Lower Paral. The bridge will seamlessly connect major roadways and the proposed Navi Mumbai International Airport, bringing about a surge in properties in its vicinity. Real estate developers are already rumored to be making strategic positioning projects near the MTHL in anticipation of this increase in demand. What is great about this project is that it is expected to generate numerous opportunities for businesses, employment and investments. By streamlining transportation, it will contribute to overall economic efficiency. The MTHL represents more than just a physical bridge. It signifies a path towards a more prosperous and interconnected future for the entire region. Our next project on the list is a government plan to create 100 technologically advanced cities in India. The goal is to use cutting-edge technology to improve the lives of city residents. The Smart Cities mission will help India achieve its goal. This project was launched in 2015 and is intended to turn 100 cities into modern cities infused with technology, sustainable practices and an enhanced quality of life. As of February 2022, the mission has made impressive progress. It has a portfolio of 5,151 projects with a budget exceeding 2,005,018 rupees crore. The great thing about this improvement is that you can see tangible results. There are work orders already issued for 6,222 projects worth 1,644,888 rupees crore. Additionally, 3,480 commendable projects with a budget consumption of 59,077 rupees have been completed. On September 26th and 27th, 2023, in Indore, there was a National Smart Cities Mission Convention that President Drupadi Murmu attended to demonstrate how committed the Indian government is to this initiative. Over 2,000 delegates from 100 smart cities participated, sharing insights, innovations, and challenges. This convention gained a considerable amount of public attention and awareness. There is progress in some cities that deserve special mention. For instance, on October 25, 2023, Indore got the title of Best National Smart City. This was a reflection of its outstanding performance. This type of accolade gives credence to the objectives of the mission. Additionally, in a laudable state ranking, 
Madhya Pradesh also won the Best State Award under the Smart Cities mission. Cities like Shimla are proactively inviting tenders to create enhanced parking spaces, while Srinagar is set to unveil 80 kilometers of cycling tracks. Just like how some cities have been thriving with this mission, some have encountered roadblocks. Goa, for example, has informed the Union Ministry of delays that are primarily due to approval challenges. The Smart City mission is anticipated to make a significant contribution to environmental, social, and governance ESG, factors, as well as further progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. Projections suggest that by 2030, India will host 60 urban centers with over 1 million residents and six megacities boasting populations exceeding 10 million. This rapid urbanization is set to reshape the nation's infrastructure, mirroring development initiatives seen in more advanced countries. One such example is the Khan River Redevelopment Plan, which not only enhances the riverfront with recreational spaces, but also contributes to the overall progress of the city. Cities worldwide have lively riverfronts or waterfronts with amenities for the public, like Chicago's Navy Pier and Melbourne's Docklands. This integration of technology and urban planning represents a significant step forward for India as it strives to compete on the global stage and foster a higher quality of life for its citizens. Do you think India will overcome the difficulties it was forced to experience and progress toward economic stability and human rights improvements via mega projects? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.